Now we're going to take a look on a case where we take two solutions, put them together, and we have kind of what we call an ideal case where the properties of both solutes and solvent, and actually in this case, it's hard to determine which one is a solute and which one is a solvent. Let's say, for example, we take benzene and toluene. They're very similar in structure. They're very similar in properties. The intermolecular forces are very similar. You can see for obvious reasons, we have the very typical benzene ring with the hydrogens around it, six hydrogens is around it. With the toluene, we have the one extension, the CH3 extension there, so they're very similar. And so when you add the two together, the delta H, the ent entropy of, of solution, is equal to zero. In other words, there's no really advantage of having the two together from an energy point of view or having them two separate. So let's say we mix the two together. What is the vapor pressure of a solution that has both benzene and toluene in it? Well, that again depends upon how much of each we have. So here we have again a chart like that that shows that if we just take a look at this line right here, this dashed line right here, this represents the vapor pressure contributed by the benzene and depending upon what the molar fraction is of the benzene. If the entire solution is benzene, then 100% of the vapor pressure is contributed by benzene that would then be equal to the vapor pressure of benzene would then be equal to the vapor pressure of the total solution. That makes sense. And if 100% of the, of the content of the solution is toluene, you can then see at 100%, if there's 0% benzene, then there's 100% uh, toluene, so we can say 1.0 for the toluene, and that would be 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, and 0. That would be the molar fraction of toluene. <clears throat> you can see then if the whole solution is toluene, then the entire vapor pressure, the total vapor pressure, would be caused by the vapor pressure of toluene. Now this is at 80 degrees centigrade, and there's a reason why we have this chart in terms of 80, 80 degrees centigrade, because look what happens here. At 80 degrees centigrade, the vapor pressure of benzene is 760 millimeters of mercury, which is, by the way, one atmosphere. And of course, whenever you have a solution so that the vapor pressure equals the atmospheric pressure, that will then be the boiling point of benzene. And sure enough, the boiling point of benzene is actually 80.1 degrees centigrade. So you know that at that temperature, and if the entire solution is benzene, benzene will begin to boil at 80 or 80.1 degrees centigrade. So since the structure of the two molecules are virtually the same, and the intermolecular forces are virtually the same, and the enthalpy of solution is equal to zero, we can then say when you put the two together, we have what we call an ideal case, and the total pressure of the solution, depending upon what the fractional content is of either benzene or toluene, is simply the sum of the individual, uh, individual vapor pressures of the two. So for example, let's say that you have a half and half situation, so let's draw a straight line up here. So if half of it is benzene and half of it is toluene, in, in terms of how many moles of each that you have, not in terms of mass, but in terms of moles, you can see that this then would be the contribution of the vapor pressure of toluene, and this here would be the contribution of the vapor pressure of benzene, and when you add the two together, that would then be the total vapor pressure. So it's simply a sum of the vapor pressures of the individual constituents in the solution. Now, it's an interesting point is, if you have a solution like this and you want to separate the two, Notice that if you then increase the temperature above 80 degrees centigrade, centigrade, the benzene will begin to boil and put lots of benzene in, in vapor form, and the, the uh, toluene will still put some vapor pressure, some vapor of toluene in the atmosphere, but most of it will be benzene, and that's the way in which you can separate it. That's called fractional distillation. In the next video, I will show you how to do that. But anyway, here we want to just show you that there's real cases the ideal case example where the molecules can be very similar and therefore the structure and the forces are very similar and we have a typical case of how you then calculate the total vapor pressure as a sum of the individual contributions. And that's the example of vapor pressure and a volatile solute.